Today on Hands On Photography, I'm looking at some of your feedback. You, the Hands On Photography listener, has sent in some emails and messages and all that good stuff. But I got one in particular from a user that's got a very, very fascinating bird photo. Let's check that out. This is Twit. This episode of Hands On Photography is brought to you by Hover. Whether you're a developer, photographer, or small business, Hover has something for you to expand your projects and get the visibility you want. Go to hover.com slash twit to get 10% off your first purchase of any domain extension for the entire first year. Well, hey, what's going on, everybody? I am Matt Pruitt, and this is Hands On Photography here on Twit TV. I hope y'all are doing well. I am unbelievable, as always. Just a typical Thursday where I like to sit down and share different tips and tricks that are going to help make you a better photographer and a better post processor. And sometimes sit down and chat with the guest photographer or even go through some of your feedback, which is what we're going to do today. I get a lot of emails and DMs and, and messages on social media and so forth. And uh, I, I, I ask you to send them. So why not? <laughs> but yeah, send your emails to hop at twit.tv. And uh, if you have like an image critique or question, comment, feedback, uh, I'd, I'd love to go through it. And if it's something that you feel would be cool to mention on the show, mention that in said message. And um, yeah, we'll go from there. So uh, let's go ahead and get started with this email. This email comes from Chris. It says, good day, Aunt Pruitt. I want to share this image with you. And yes, you can use it on your shows. The image is of a sea eagle getting fish I captured in Kenya. I feel the image has more noise than it should be going on at ISO 320. Do you believe I had the wrong settings or am I at the set limit for my lens? Also, I have tried editing the color many times, three, <laughs> and cannot seem to make it pop. Attached is the raw image straight out of camera. Thanks for your time and a big thank you if you can help. Regards, Chris. All right, my man. Thank you very much for sending this photo on over. Thank you for this email. And I, I've already taken a quick look at the image. I haven't done any retouching on it, but I do have some things that, that we'll get into that in a minute. But you're talking about the image noise on it. Uh, you, you mentioned ISO 320. Yeah, you're right. Typically at an ISO setting that low, you will not see a lot of image noise. Um, when I did look at your image, I did see a little bit of noise in there, but not a lot. Um, but I wonder, like, why did you even have that much noise anyway, even though it's very, very, very minimal? And the first thing that came to my mind was the heat of the uh, image sensor. If that image sensor gets hot, it will tend to create some noise in your image. It just it is what it is. So. I don't know what the current uh, what the situation at the time was as far as temperature goes when you're out getting the shoot. Basically, based on looking at the image, I would assume it wasn't a hot day unless you've just been, you know, doing a lot of what they call running and gunning with the camera and just shooting several hundred images and your camera was a little warm. I don't know, but I really don't have an answer on to why you got a lot of or well, got any noise in that photograph. I, I, I don't know if any of you other hands-on photography listeners know or have an idea, feel free to email me and, and um, maybe we can share that response on the show. But let's go ahead and uh, hop on over into Lightroom and take a look at this here image. All right, we are in the image and what we have here is this beautiful eagle just totally snatched this fish up out of the water. Dude, that's just crazy so daggum cool great timing way to get this shot man uh it, the sharpness is is fairly good uh it, again you, you talk about noise and you, it may be hard to see this in your podcast player it may be hard to see this on youtube but i do see a little bit there you know just 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 a little bit it's not anything terrible so I'm, I wouldn't worry too much about it. You know what I'm saying? So let me zoom out. But if we look at the settings for this shot, okay, you shot this at ISO 320, as mentioned in the email. Uh, 
shot this at a 267 millimeter focal length. So I was, dang, that bird was that close. You only had to go 267. Wow. That's impressive. Uh, then F5.6 on, on the aperture and shot at one two thousandth of a second shutter speed. So you had a really fast shutter with a fairly low ISO. So again, this whole noise thing just is not making a lot of sense. I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, I know this is a Canon camera of some sort. It didn't really specify when I tried to look at the metadata. Uh, I only know this because it's a raw file in a .cr2 format. That's Canon's raw um, file format. Now, when I look back over here at this library and the metadata, it doesn't really say. It just gives your personal information, which we will blur out there. And um, yeah, I, I, I'm not sure why the noise is there, but let's go ahead and just dive into this image and, and just really make it pop. You were saying you were having some some issues trying to get the colors to stand out on it. And I get that. But some of it's not your fault. You know, you're in a scene that is pretty <laughs> It's pretty monotone uh, or maybe dual tone. It's not that many colors out there. This looks like it was shot in a colder time of the year where there's not a lot of green going on or anything like that. But with the magic of post-processing, you can bring some of this stuff out, especially if it's a raw file. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. But first, the very first thing I'm going to do with this image is take a look at the horizon line. So yes, I'm going to nitpick and straighten out this horizon line. Got to get that straight. All right, there. I got that out of the way. So let's play around with this image a little bit more. So the hero of the image is the bird snatching up this fish. So how can we really bring out the details in that? Let's go ahead and just get started with the base processing with, you know, checking out the exposure. Uh, this histogram says we got a really big spike right here in the mid mid tones. So if we push this up, we want to give it a little more in the highlights here just to open it up a little bit more, not too much. OK, give it a little bit of contrast. And when we give it some contrast, it should, you know, separate the colors a little bit. So let's just give it a little just a touch of contrast. OK, and that's starting to look better already. The, the feathers are starting to look a little bit more more defined. Uh, that yellow is starting to stand a lot, of, stand out a little bit more on the beak. Let's take a look at. Hmm, I'm gonna push the shadows up just a touch, just a little, not too much. But the next thing is the details of the of the bird. So let's go ahead and look at clarity and look at texture. And I'm inside of Lightroom right now. And yes, I know everybody doesn't have Lightroom, but most of these tools are available in pretty much whatever photo editor you you're using. So. There's that. But anyway, I'm going to push the clarity and texture up, which is going to try to sharpen it up a little bit. And when you use clarity inside of Lightroom, it tends to give a little bit more contrast. And as I push that up, I definitely got more contrast. So let's see if I turn this off. This is what the clarity looked like, you know, at default. But as I increase the clarity, see, I'm getting more contrast in the bird's uh, face and is it its face? Yeah, the bird's face and its beak. And that shadow is starting to be a little bit more defined. So be mindful of that because sometimes cranking that clarity too much can give it too much contrast, you know, so you just got to find that balance. So right now we're, we're getting a lot more separation and detail of the bird showing here as well as separating it, separating it from the, the background there. All right, now there's this dehaze option. Dehaze also gives you a little bit more contrast. So we're going to take the dehaze slider and increase it. And now you see it's really, really popping out. But again, we started adding more black levels here. You saw the histogram change up here in the upper right. More black levels increased. And that's, you know, you got to sort of play around with the balance because I think there's too much there. So let's push the black level up like so, and maybe reduce the contrast just a little. There we go. All right, now this is saying we're clipping in the highlights allegedly. Don't see how. Let's push this exposure back just a touch. 
There we go. You have to just sort of do a bit of push and pull when it comes to dehaze and contrast. You don't want to do too much, but having some dehaze does make a big difference. So again, just looking at the general exposure settings of this, this is this is looking much better uh, versus, you know, the original raw file. So if I do a before and after, this is the before and this is the after. It really starts to pop and stand out a little bit more. But we can do more to this. Let's play around with like the um, HSL of this, the hue, saturation, uh, the different colors of this particular image. So I'm going to scroll down here to this section that says hue, saturation and luminance or HSL. And I'm going to target this orangey color here, you know. So if I go to the saturation, if I pull this, the, the orange back for this particular hue, you see, it sort of takes it away, but I want to just bump it up just a touch, not too much. I don't want to overdo it. Okay. And then if you want to, you can grab this little slider button here, just click on that. And then when you hover it over a particular area of the image, it'll automatically work on the sliders for you based on the particular hue. So I'm just going to drag up and down like so and that gives me a little more life in those wings just a little bit you see it targeted the red and it also targeted the orange a little bit more okay so we got a we got some life in this bird here this episode of hands-on photography is brought to you by hover it's time to make plans and let hover help you achieve them if you're a blogger creating a portfolio or building an online store, or you just trying to get a more memorable redirect from your LinkedIn page, Hover has the best domain names and email addresses just for you. Email at your domain name is key to connecting with customers and building trust for your brand. Please, please stop using your name at yahoo.com or your name at gmail.com. You're better than that. You need to get signed up with Hover. Hover has domain-based emails all for your needs, small or large, and they're really easy to set up. You can add as many mailboxes to your domain as you need. Uh, when your domain renews, your mailboxes are going to renew too. Plus, they're very, very inexpensive. The prices are unbeatable. Their most popular mailbox option out there is a no-brainer solution for business owners. You can get access to your email anywhere. So if you're used to using a specific email app, you know, go ahead and use that to access your email. But if you're not much of an app person, then you can just log into webmail and access your email. Hover makes this really easy for you. It's so easy to log in and try to find yourself a brand new domain that fits your brand. And then the, the, the interface is super clean and just, just allows you to fly through it. And then when it's time to get everything set up, their customer service is right there to help you out. I really do love this process with them. Hover isn't here to upsell you on the stuff you don't need. They just want to help. Hover has pro level tools. Hover has powerful domain and email management tools that are intuitive and easy to use, whether you're a web pro or you're just getting started. It's private and secure. With who is privacy protection included with your domain purchase, your private information will remain just that, private. It's a great way to reduce spam and protect yourself from unwanted solicitations. Hover Connect lets you pick the service you want to build and host your website. Connect helps you start using your domain name with just a few clicks. Seriously, it's just a few clicks, really simple. At Hover, you're a customer, not a source of data. Take control of your data with reliable tracker-free email. Hover is trusted by hundreds of thousands of customers who use their domain names and email to turn their ideas into a reality. Okay, so listen, whether you're a developer or a photographer or a small business, Hover has something for you to expand your projects and get the visibility you want. Head on over to hover.com slash twit to get 10% off your first purchase of any domain extension for the entire first year. That's hover.com slash twit for 10% off your domain extension for a full year. 
And we thank Hover for their support of Hands On Photography and all of our other shows here at Twit. But what about the rest of the scene? Yes, the bird is the hero in this scene, but we can still give it a little bit more color and a little bit more pop overall while playing with the details of this bird having the fish in its in its talons there. OK, so I'm thinking about the water and I'm thinking about the, the trees back there in the background. When I think about the water and this just this this environment out there sort of looking chilly and cold, why not have that water look a little bit cooler so let's just change the color temperature if you will of the water and make it a little bit cooler so i'm going to go all the way up here to the top where we have all of our selective adjustments with the brush and masking options inside of lightroom you can do this in most editors just find some type of selective adjustment brush all right and i'm just going to click one time here like so i'm going to give it a nice bit of feathering Let's push the flow up a little bit more, give it 100% opacity. And I'm just going to brush along the water like so. And you'll see this is giving me a red mask on the screen. That's saying, okay, wherever you're brushing, this is the stuff that we're going to target in your processing. So if I want, I can even go over the bird just a little bit like that. I even went over the horizon line just a touch and that's okay. Cause what I can do now is erase the excess by holding down the alt or option key and just brushing away the excess. Cause I don't want this to affect the bird. Okay. And I don't want it to affect the trees back there in the horizon. So let's just brush it all away like so. And this is way easier if you had a Wacom tablet. I'm using a mouse right now and I am not enjoying it. <laughs> I'm so used to using it by tablet. Okay. And clean up on this bird just a little bit more. Just shrink the brush down. And remember, you can always zoom in to make it easier on yourself. So I'm just going to zoom in like so. And I want to brush away. all of this adjustment on top of the bird. There we go. And something like this is a lot easier with some AI tools, like what's inside of Photoshop. You can do a selection, select the object, and then do your <laughs> color correction all around it that way. But it's all good. We got this now. There we go. So now let's zoom out. Okay. So now we got the water taken care of. So I'm going to turn this mask off and I'm going to start dialing back the color temperature of this water. So I'm just going to select right here in the white balance section and just take the temperature and go more towards the cooler side. And let's watch what happens. Look at that. Very, very nice. Now I can go extreme like that. Don't do that. That's hideous. <laughs> but just find a happy medium. A little bit of push and pull, you know. I think somewhere around minus 25 or minus 28, something like that should work. Yeah, there we go. So that's a lot more blue in this water. You know, just brush on it. Make sure I got it all covered. Very good. And it did not affect the bird. Right. And then we can play around with the saturation. So let's push the saturation up for that particular area of the mask like that. See, giving this picture just a little bit more life, just a little bit. Something like that. There we go. I think that looks pretty daggum good. Pretty good. Okay. Yeah, I dig that. All right. So I'm going to turn the mask off now. Actually, no, let's do one more little adjustment brush. So I'm going to click create a mask again, like so. And I'm going to select the brush. And this time I'm going to brush on top of the bird, like so. 
Because what I want to do is give this bird even more detail. Like that. Okay, so I'm going to turn this mask off. Let's zoom in a little bit. And I'm going to take the clarity and push that clarity up a little, just a little, and push that texture up just a little. There we go. So now that gives the bird even more details right there in our image. This is good, in my opinion. <laughs> All right, so now let's do a bit of a vignette on here. All right, so we'll go high priority and dial it back like that. There we go. Actually, I don't even want to do a vignette here. Matter of fact, I want to crop this because I mean, that bird is just awesome. So let's crop this down like so. If you want to use you know, particular aspect ratios, you can. Um, I've, I'm a fan of going square on this one, this particular composition like that. And heck, let's get a little bit tighter. Why not? I think something like this would work because we're going to get a little bit of the splash trails showing up here in the image too. Something like that. Or maybe that's too tight too tight at the top. A little bit bigger, a little bit bigger. There we go. Yeah, I dig that because we get this whole trail, you know, we get this implied motion, you know, whoops, I hit the wrong button. Sorry about that. We get this implied motion, you know, with the splash trails going and it's going from left to right. People love that in images, especially in bird photography. Oh, this is, that's just great. And again, if you want to do a little bit more vignette on it, you can, but heck now that I'm thinking about it, let me do one more magic brush here. And instead of selecting the brush, I'm going to select the um, radial tool. So radial gradient tool. So I'm going to grab that and I'm just going to create a little little circle around the bird like that. Let's rotate it a touch. Something like that should work, right? Stretch it out some. Okie dokie. Give it some feathering so it's a gradual effect like so. There we go. Something like that. And now with this gradient, I'm going to um, flip it around. So let's invert it. So we can click this invert option in the upper right. And then I'm going to turn off this overlay. And then we can just drop the exposure. Something like this. So now the bird is a little bit more of the focus. We can do it either that way or just turn the inversion off and just brighten up the bird like that. Yeah, that's actually better. Yeah, that's better. So now I can just adjust this to where it doesn't look too weird and too processed. Or it looks a little bit more natural. There we go. Yeah, something like that. And if I turn it down, we get this spot on it, but crank it up a little bit. This bird starts to stand out a little bit more like so. There. I dig it. I dig it. Yeah, I dig it. So let's do a quick before and after. So this is before. And then this is the after. So let's do it this way. I give you one more time. So we'll go lights out. So this is before. And this is the after. I think that works. I think that works. I think that works. Hey, what do you think, Mr. Chris? Does that work for you? <laughs> 
I really, really enjoyed checking out this image. It's really, really nice. Heck of a shot. Heck of a find. I, I wonder how long you sat out there to wait on that shot. How many times did you go to that location to get that shot? Hey, write me back. Let me know. I'm very, very curious. Hey, the rest of you hands-on photography listeners and viewers, you can do the same. Shoot me an email. Hop at twit.tv with all of your questions, comments, and feedback. And uh, yeah. It's, it's a lot of fun chatting with you all, and it's, it's even better to be able to share the conversation with the other hands-on photography listeners. All right. Now, again, thank you all so much for joining me each and every week. For everybody that has joined for the very first time, hey, welcome to you, and thank you for popping in. Go ahead and subscribe right now on whatever podcast app you use. Uh, you can subscribe on our YouTube channel. You can subscribe on Apple Podcasts and you can subscribe on Spotify. We're on all of those different platforms. Just go ahead and subscribe and tell it to auto download so you can be able to check out the shows right as they release each and every Thursday. Also, be sure to give me a follow on the world of social media. I am Ant underscore Pruitt on Instagram. And I'm still posting fairly regularly over there, including some video content. So go over there and give me a follow Ant underscore Pruitt over there. And lastly, if you want to check out some of our previous shows, head to our website, twit.tv slash hop. That's twit.tv slash H-O-P for hands-on photography. You'll see all of the previous episodes. You'll see all of the previous show notes there. So there's a lot of information in those show notes and a lot of links and things that you can check out. So go on over there, twit.tv slash H-O-P uh, to check out all of the previous episodes. All right. Thank you all so much for watching. Thank you all so much for sharing the show with other folks. Thank you to my man, Mr. Victor, for making me look and sound good each and every week, even though it's starting to get hot under this lights in here. I don't know if you're going to be able to fix the specular highlights on my forehead, my man. <laughs> Best of luck to you. All right, everybody, safely create and dominate, and we'll catch you next time. Take care. Listeners of this program get an ad-free version if they're members of Club Twit. $7 a month gives you ad-free versions of all of our shows, plus membership in the Club Twit Discord, a great clubhouse for Twit listeners. And finally, the Twit Plus feed with shows like Stacy's Book Club, The Untitled Linux Show, The Giz Fizz, and more. Go to twit.tv slash club twit. And thanks for your support.